Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Maria Moreno Khalifa and this is our YouTube channel. Today I am outside and we are taking a little walk with Bella and Aqua, our two baby girls, one a dog and one a baby. We are sitting outside in our neighborhood enjoying the weather here in California. So wherever it is around the world that you are from, hello. Is this video is going to be about how um or that I married a convicted murder and life beyond titles. So stay tuned. So up next we're gonna go ahead and get started with a little introduction video about my husband and that way you guys get to know a little bit about the background and let's roll. I uh, followed some older kids in my neighborhood to what I thought they were going to burglarize a home. This is Sean Khalifa describing the biggest mistake of his life. I thought maybe I could go steal something from the house. It was January 2004, and Sean was just a few days past his 15th birthday. He and a friend acted as lookouts while the other two boys went into the house, according to court documents. And a few seconds later, the door opened, and the 18 year old kid, Juan Pena, he grabs me by the shirt and pulls me in the house. And he's yelling, he's like, Is this what you wanted to see? Is this what you wanted to see? So I, I look over to where he's pointing, and Mr. Love is, is, is dead on his living room floor. The two boys had savagely tortured and beat 77-year-old Hubert Love to death. Then they took his car and sped away. In the car, more violence. One of the young men shot his main accomplice in the head. Khalifa swears he had no idea his friends could commit such heinous acts, but he kept quiet. He now says it was because he feared for his own life after seeing one friend murder the other. However, he also takes responsibility for getting into that situation. Looking back, Khalifa admits he was a thief and ran with a bad crowd. But I was very selfish at that time. At my 15-year-old self, I was clearly becoming a criminal in my neighborhood. Like, we're stealing, I was comfortable with stealing, and for me to be comfortable with the point of leaving Mr. Love on his floor, clearly something was wrong with me, and I, I had a criminal way of thinking. Khalifa was convicted of first-degree murder, even though he had no prior knowledge of the killings and wasn't in the house when they were committed. He was sentenced to 25 years to life and spent three years in juvenile hall, then was transferred to Donovan State Prison in San Diego. He is serving this sentence because of California's felony murder rule, which allows a defendant to be charged with murder for a killing that happened during a dangerous felony, even if the defendant is not the killer. If one participant goes off on his or her own, her own and kills somebody, all participants are equally liable for first-degree murder under the felony murder rule. Kate Chatfield is an advisor at the criminal justice advocacy organization, the Justice Collaborative. She says a new California law limited the rule. It says people can't be convicted of murder unless they were the actual killer, helped the killer, or, quote, acted with reckless indifference to human life. The new law says people sentenced under the felony murder rule can apply for resentencing. SB 1437 is not just a get out of jail free card for people who are in prison. They have to petition 
the superior court in which in the in their county in which they were sentenced. Chatfield says there isn't a good tracking system, but she estimates up to 800 people in California could be eligible for reduced sentences under the law. But the law has powerful opponents. It essentially allows people to get away with murder. San Diego District Attorney Summer Steffen is one of several California DAs who are opposing the new law in court. They say it violates the state's mandatory minimum sentencing and provides a loophole that savvy killers could exploit. If they all wear masks and you can't determine who shot the gun, then all three or four or two will get away with murder. But this doesn't describe what Khalifa did. He helped a robbery that turned into a murder. Stefan says there are other ways people like him can get reduced sentences. Well, they could petition for resentencing if they truly had a lesser role. She says San Diego is the first county to cut someone's sentence under the new law that took effect this year. Khalifa has asked the Riverside courts for a lesser sentence multiple times and has been denied. Tomorrow, we'll talk about what it has been like to grow from a boy into a man while behind bars. Entering into the adult criminal justice system, it never once crossed my mind that I would ever be part of a restorative justice fair inside of an adult institution. In 2019, this happened. The United States' first and largest restorative justice fair ever inside of an American prison. And it happened here in San Diego at the R.J. Donovan Correctional Facility. At that time, I was serving a life prison sentence, and there was nothing more that I wanted to do but make living amends to victims of crime. So for three days, we laughed, we danced, we sang, and we listened to victims of crime who had enough courage to come in and share their stories and interact with us, the perpetrators of these crimes. It was so healing and divine to see men sentenced to life in prison make living amends. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. since I was 15 years old. Never been to a job fair, never had employment in the community, only been employed in institutions. So I was excited to come here and check out what a job fair was all about and what employment opportunities were available. Since I was 15 years old and I have a 25 year life sentence and I actually go to the board in a few months, my first opportunity to ask for release. So my favorite part is that at the most stressful time in my life when I have to go ask and plead for my release and prove that I'm rehabilitated, I get a weekly refreshing meditation and just a, uh, a cleansing of my chakras each week that I love and I can take back into my prison community with me and motivate others and I think it's going to transition well from prison to the community. Old pirates, they rob I. These are songs for an unusual audience. Today, 10 News was invited inside Donovan State Prison for really a unique performance. And new at 530, reporter Joe Little was there to see how it hopes to inspire the inmates who could one day be your neighbor. I hurt myself today. It's a somber song for what you'd expect to be a somber crowd. What have I become? But Robert Byrd wants people to feel the emotion. When you pick up the guitar, an acoustic guitar, you start playing it, you feel it resonate through your body. Resonate through your body, your mind, and your heart. Maybe a hard sell, especially for lifers like Sean Khalifa. I was a part of a burglary, and my co-defendants unfortunately attacked the homeowner, and he did die. Khalifa and dozens of Donovan correctional inmates are here to listen and be inspired by Wayne Kramer. But for a few years, I was known as 00180190. A prisoner himself in the 70s. Old pirates, they rob I. Now a legendary guitarist who spreads the love of music through his program, Jail Guitar Doors. He brought his talent. None of them can stop time. And 12 new Fender guitars for the inmates. These guitars represent a challenge. Sign up for our songwriting workshop program. Amazing things will happen. Amazing things through music. Redemption song. 
it's easy to connect with, and you make a powerful connection with making music directly yourself. Kramer's gift allows instructors like Robert Bird to teach the inmates how to play. Teach them how to express themselves. Emotions like pain, fear, and happiness. You can't unlearn music. That's one of the things that keeps me going is that I notice an extraordinary change. A change that can prepare Khalifa for life beyond these walls. He's been behind them for 14 years. I think if I keep working and maturing, I'll have a chance. A chance to be free Away. by letting the music resonate through his heart. There you go. Inside Donovan Correctional, Joe Little, 10 News. This was the first time Wayne Kramer has performed at Donovan Correctional, but it's the 100th time he's played for oh, inmates. This was, this was, uh, that Can was right before. Oh yeah, that's, oh, yeah. that's right before. Right before he was arrested. <laughs> Colleen Khalifa spreads out photos of her son, Sean, in her San Juan Capistrano home. Her daughter, Jennifer, and grandson, Jackson, lean over the table to look. Is that your uncle? Jackson, where's Uncle Sean? At Sandy A. Sean Khalifa is in Donovan State Prison. He's 15 years into a sentence of 25 years to life for murder. But no one is claiming he killed anyone. When Sean was first arrested, I called people, you know, lawyers, and I said, felony murder? They told me right off the bat, you've lost. You're going to visit your son for the rest of his life in prison. He acted as lookout for two older teenagers when they robbed a house and killed the homeowner. Though Sean Khalifa had no idea they were going to kill the man and wasn't in the house when the murder took place, he was still convicted of felony murder. This is because of a long-established legal doctrine in California that allows prosecutors to file felony murder charges against suspects, even if, like Khalifa, they weren't directly involved in the killing. But late last year, then-Governor Jerry Brown signed a law that allows prisoners in this position to apply for a lesser sentence. The Khalifas now have hope, but they're still not sure Sean will be free. That's because district attorneys are challenging the new law in court. It's been a huge roller coaster. Yes. I mean, we get our hopes up and we're, you know, then the pain all comes back again because we're let down. So the, the roller coaster ride has been horrendous. And I've had some hope at different points during my incarceration. This is Sean Khalifa on the phone from prison. And at one point I exhausted my appeal process, so the, the waiting of appeals was over and I was just kind of reserving myself to spending my life in prison. So this, to have this newfound hope, it's, uh, it can be stressful. Stressful because he feels stuck in a permanent state of limbo. Because the only thing I can plan for is to be in prison for the rest of my life, and that's the only thing that that seems to make life bearable and comfortable is just being acclimated to this environment. So Khalifa has made a life for himself in prison in case he doesn't get out. He's written books, plays, and has a podcast. It's extraordinary to have this hope of getting out, but at the same time, that increases one's vulnerability tremendously um, to disappointments around setbacks. Alan Mobley runs Project Rebound, which helps people transition out of prison and earn college degrees. He considers the felony murder rule that put Khalifa away a byproduct of the mass incarceration era. Many laws of draconian in nature um, were brought into existence in response to both the politicization and then also increased public concern about uh, drug use and drug trafficking. In recent years, the pendulum has swung the other way with national criminal justice reform and state rollbacks to things like three strikes sentencing. But these changes are often met with resistance. I just don't believe in unsafe reform that tramples over a victim's rights. San Diego District Attorney Summer Steffen is among the district attorneys challenging the law in court. She says she supports criminal justice reform, but feels the changes to the felony murder rule go too far. Criminal justice reform has to weigh the constitutional rights of everybody, of victims, of offenders, of public safety. But some see juveniles with life sentences as victims of a harsh system and of human brain development. It's kind of a dangerous time for many people, and uh, some adolescents are... Um, uh, likely to take risks. 
Terry Jernigan runs the Center for Human Development at UC San Diego and leads a national study looking at adolescents' brains. Young people during adolescence do have a perfectly natural spike in their impulsive behaviors, and this does result in more mistakes in judgment. And she says court sentences should take that into consideration, though she didn't know about Khalifa's particular case. So we know that this is a relatively temporary condition and that the same individuals that will make poor judgments will not be prone to make those same kinds of decisions and judgments at a later point. Are you going to have fun with your new friends? Back at the Khalifa household, Colleen is ready for her son to come home. I know that he's been through a living hell. And uh, I can't believe that he's kept his integrity still intact and his, his uh, empathy and passion for others. She hopes he will have the chance to display these traits outside the prison walls. Claire Tregesser, KPBS News. Delivering face -to -face Sean Khalifa like wanders the campus at San Diego State University, taking in the crowds of students rushing to class. Yeah, I'm this isn't too much for you right now. No, I went to the library earlier. I loved it. College is one of the many things Khalifa missed. He went to prison at age 15 and is now 31. He's touring SDSU with the hopes of enrolling as a student uh, in a few years. That's Khalifa heaven as a library. His life took a dark turn when, as a teenager in Riverside County, he participated in a home invasion. He acted as lookout while two of his friends savagely beat the homeowner, Hubert Love, to death. Khalifa says the plan was to rob him, but he had no idea they would kill him. But he was still convicted under California's felony murder rule, which allows the defendant to be charged with murder for a killing that happened during a dangerous felony even if the defendant is not the killer. <laughs> but then last year, new hope. A new law removed much of the felony murder rule and allowed prisoners like Khalifa to apply for a lesser sentence. District attorneys in the state, including San Diego DA Summer Steffen, challenged the law change, but this week the California Supreme Court rejected their challenge. That means there's no question Khalifa will remain free. He sat down yeah. with KPBS to talk about his journey. I started letting it sink in and letting go and starting to embrace the fact that I was going home and it wasn't going to be stopped this time. And I got to embody it and feel it. You could just feel the stress like melt off of you when you kind of know you're going home instead of just thinking it's possible. Have you sp spoken to the victim's family at all? I have not. It would be nice to like make living amends and, and have dialogue with them in the future. But I understand currently my release is not something that they're excited about or happy. They're probably worried and, and they're going through a lot of stress themselves. So I think the best thing is just um, time. What would you want to say to them? I would just want to let them know that um, um, personally, it was a, a tragedy in my life as well that Mr. Love lost his life. And it's something I have to live with forever, just knowing that I was, I was there. Like, I showed up and that I didn't get them help that day. That's something I live with the rest of my life, and I'll spend the rest of my life making living amends for that. So you've been in prison for more than 15 years? Yeah, 16 exactly. A couple of days over. Are you worried about fitting back into normal life? What's so exciting is that um, when I came back out, it felt like I never left. Because I've always been goofy. I've always liked to make people laugh. I've always been silly, but before I was a criminal, so I thought like a criminal, and I had all these criminal uh, attributes like stealing and lying, but now to be out here and to be able to make people laugh, but have these humble experience that I've gotten, like while in prison, all the groups I'd taken, like all the work I've done on myself, to come out here and now exhibit humbleness, kindness, um, compassion, helping strangers, like I just love it. I'm, I'm like super excited. I'm fitting right into society. Um, other things that you want to say? There's a guy named Joshua Nichols, who was a former lifer. I was, I was uh, hanging out with the other day. He said it's called survivor's guilt, where you feel bad for the, the guys you left behind. So that's just one thing I, I want to share, that there's still guys in there that don't need to be incarcerated. So hopefully that's what restorative justice does eventually. That's why I'm wearing this shirt. Sean Khalifa's mom, Colleen Khalifa, is thrilled to have her son home. 
She says she doesn't worry about him reintegrating into society at all. When I see the look of happiness and joy on his face, and I know who he is and his strong character, I just, I can't worry. I can't worry about him because I know he's going to be fine. Why are you not living in the safest housing environment because all of the residents that live at this house and there's... Six of us total all have jobs. Sean Khalifa is standing on the porch of his transitional housing in Talmadge, filming with his phone to show us around. So we all are out in the community with a potential to bring back coronavirus to our housing. Khalifa was just released from Donovan Correctional Facility after 16 years. He was charged with felony murder as a teenager and now has served his time. So worrying about getting sick is just one of his challenges right now. Khalifa was counting on getting help from Southwestern College's Restorative Justice Program, which provides an opportunity for inmates to take college classes while they're on the inside and continue working toward their degree on the college's Eastern Chula Vista campus when they get out. But like classes everywhere, Khalifa's are now online only. This is not easy for him. I never did well in school before being incarcerated, so I always had ADHD. It's hard for me to focus and pay attention and just keep my attention on one thing. So online courses, uh, yeah, I'm not enjoying it. I'm grinding it out, though. Work hard. Despite Khalifa's challenges, he's doing really well, says Patrice Milkovic, the program's director. She's more concerned about other students. Those students are struggling to, um, some of them have housing insecurity issues, food insecurity issues. They don't have work. It's so hard to see people and work with them without having that face-to-face -face contact because the relationships that we build are built on trust. And it's very hard to trust somebody over a text message or a phone call. The pandemic has also kept the program's teachers from being able to go into prisons to hold classes but they're doing the best they can with this part of the program as well. We're here at the Chula Vista campus, Southwestern College, getting prepared for our drive up student packet handoff. They pick up completed coursework packets from students in prison, let the papers sit for 48 hours while the germs die, then hand them off to teachers. Two weeks later, teachers drop off the graded work. Milkovich says they're not giving up, especially because their students need help now more than ever. Trying to be um, an ambassador or, or an ombudsman um, or an agent, you know, to try to help facilitate and navigate through these very crazy times. As for Khalifa, life outside prison is not exactly what he expected, at least not so far. Staying in the house on quarantine, like I have this unyielding urge to get outside. I don't ever want to be in the house. <laughs> what, what is this? Look at this beat. Ah, it's Shai Khalifa. Hello. Thank you so much, Raquel and Patrice. This means the absolute world to me to be out here and for this to be my future. I love it. Let's go, Jaguars. We'll go from being a Jaguar to an Aztec. Oh my God, what's going on? It's an earthquake. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> ah, earthquake. Uh, oh my God, where am I? What is up here? Oh, I'm at mom's house. Oh, this is great, because I have somebody else that wants to give you a shout out. It's a cute baby. <laughs> this is Hi, walk this earth and you are definitely one of them for everything that you do for so many people thank you ever so much for all you've done in the project and what you've done for sean and my family uh this is your co-worker mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no, no violence challenge your former co-worker gave you a shout out uh, bye bye thank you so bye. much Bye. <laughs> An inspiring story tonight. A young former inmate turned his life around to graduate with honors from a local college. News 8's Tim Blodgett has more. It's graduation time for Southwestern College, a drive through celebration for the class of 2021. While it's a huge achievement for any young student, a degree from college was literally an escape for Sean Khalifa. 
my entire life revolved around institutions and to have college come in and identify us as a college student versus a prisoner, an inmate, versus somebody to be punished, it rejuvenated my life. At the age of 15, Khalifa was a Riverside teen going down the wrong path. He dropped out of high school and was involved with drugs and gangs. That year, he participated in a burglary in which the homeowner was killed. Though he took no part in the homicide, Khalifa was charged with first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. If you're around a, a dangerous felony and didn't actually commit the murder, you could still be held liable. So in that position, I was prosecuted to the fullest extent at the age of 15, tried as an adult. From juvenile detention to Donovan State Prison, Sean Khalifa was incarcerated for a murder he didn't commit. Though he was labeled a killer by the state and faced a life sentence, he never gave up hope for a better future. So the only thing I could look forward to was to just be at peace. So I found my peace through going to church, but I also found a peace through going to college. Not only did he maintain a 4.0 GPA at Southwestern while he was incarcerated, but became a role model for his fellow prisoners, a population he says is misunderstood. They want to be fed good food. They want opportunities for growth. They want to make their mama proud, which I love doing. I love you, mom. Shout out Colleen Khalifa. So. Khalifa's sentence was commuted by then-Governor Jerry Brown, and in February of 2020, the parole board released Sean from prison. <laughs> After graduating from Southwest, Khalifa was accepted to attend SDSU to further his education in sociology in hopes that he can turn more young lives around. Hey, I'm going to school, I'm earning degrees, and you can do that too, regardless if you're sentenced to life or you're going home tomorrow. You know I dream in color and do the things I want. Think you got the best of me, think you had the last laugh. Bet you think everything good is gone Think you left me broken down Think I'd come running back Baby, you don't know me cause you're dead wrong What doesn't kill you makes you stronger Stand a little taller Doesn't mean I'm lonely when I'm alone What doesn't kill you makes a fighter Footsteps even lighter Doesn't mean I'm over Used to be a San Diego State prison. Now I'm at SDSU, straight living. Chocolate milk and fish and sugar. We met when he had graduated college and he was about to start at San Diego State University in California. And we met in our mother's neighborhood where they both live now. Right away when I met him, he had told me about he came from and everything. And right away I knew that there was something special. I knew that it wasn't only him who had been working in his life but it was god and so the next following question that i asked him and the first question that i have ever asked him was what is your belief like what's behind your motivation and this like transformation and this amazing life that he was now about to begin then i didn't even know that i was going to be a part of so but anyways so he finally stated that it was that he was a Christian and that it was all to the glory of God. And that was how I knew that he was going to be in my life, regardless if we were just going to be friends or if something more was going to happen. I knew that he was special. This was the most unique situation and I would have never believed it if, any, if anybody would have told me before. I would have never guessed that I would ever meet and be open to meet a convicted uh, felon, basically. It just proves to you how amazing God is and how merciful he is. No matter what, that God protected him throughout this whole, you know, 16 years because he was in there for 16 years and it is just incredible how God turned around his life gave him that opportunity to redeem himself in society and start all over again it just shows you that even if people uh, name you something or put you in a selected group or say that you're this or say that you're that and they add titles to you it doesn't mean no matter the title it is when God 
has something brewing when God already knows what's going to happen he puts you exactly where you need to be at the exact time that you need to be there so hopefully this is something that will be a motivation something that you guys can get inspired by because it sure inspired inspired and motivated me you guys get to share all this with us so welcome to our life Aqua, come here meet Aqua she is now three years old a border collie mix she is our special firstborn we also have Bella over here she is on her fifth day of life and on Sunday will be her first her very first week here's our little princess and remember that God can do anything anyways don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more content following us following our whole family our life here in socal so stay tuned guys and don't forget